Y'all can help remind. Oh, it's working. Okay. I'll show SHAP recap after this. We'll try it. Um, all right. Polyprotic acids. Um, we talked about this a little bit, and what's important for you to realize about polyprotic acids is that the acids are going to dissociate stepwise. So if we have an acid that's got two H's, it's going to, oh, fabulous. It's going to lose one H at a time when it dissociates. What's really important as well about that is the fact that when we are finding pH of a polyprotic acid, um, you see we, how we create an H plus in step one and how we create an H plus in step two? A lot of people are like, well, don't we have to include both of those total amount of H's in order to find total pH? And the answer to that is no, because any time you lose an H, the second step, you're going to lose even less H's. So the second step is mathematically negligible in terms of the amount of H's. So we ignore it. And I'm going to prove, you that, prove that to you mathematically. An example of this, and it's one that I kind of fight with some people about. There are a lot of, I, I teach a lot of teachers in the world. And um, that sounded weird, but I do. Um, we know this is a strong acid, right? H2SO4. And so if I were to say, what's the, what's the pH of this? What did I tell you to do for any strong acid or base to find pH? Just take strong. Strong, just take the negative log of it, the concentration. What happens in a case like this, a lot of teachers out there I've seen and a lot of students will do this and go, oh, they both dissociate. So I'm going to say instead of 0.1, we actually have 0.2 molar of that, and they take the negative log of 0.2. And that is really, really wrong. Because this does not dissociate 100% to this. What this actually dissociates 100% to is that. Okay? So this second H, then that would come off in the second step. The amount that comes off, it becomes a weak acid at that point, And the amount that comes off is mathematically negligible to this total. So this is totally wrong. So what I'm going to show you right now is mathematically how, um, why that's true. So we're going to get to there in our first problem, but that's going to be a point of today's lesson, a lot of the stuff we're doing. Um, hydrolysis of polyprotic acids, we're going to do some problems with this. I'm not going to read through this right now. If after the lecture you don't understand what I talked about, I want you to read this page if you're lost. Um, first, let's go ahead and look at some structures of some acids. Um, and bases, and why is an acid an acid and a base a base? I mean, this acid, this H2SO4, you can see has an O and an H on it. This is what it looks like. And this sodium hydroxide, in addition to having that OH for base, it also just has an H. So why does, it, why does an H come off one and an OH come off the other? It has to do with the strength of the bonds and the polarity of the bonds. So let's take this one because it's usually an easier example. Notice the difference in electronegativity between these two guys is much bigger than the difference in electronegativity between these two. So what happens, because this bond is more polar, borderline, it's ionic, okay, water being polar itself is more apt and more attracted to this area, and it's going to be more apt to come in and help dissociate that bond. So the more polar the bond, the easier it is to, and I'm going to take away the word break, because break sounds like you're... I mean, it's a stronger bond if it's more polar. It's not that it's more, more apt to break. It's more apt to dissociate in water. It's more apt to dissociate in water. So that's why the break or the dissociation occurs here, producing OH minus and NH plus. So that makes that a base. Versus this H2SO4, the difference in electronegativity between these two is larger than this one. So this one is more polar. So water is more apt to come in here and dissociate this bond. So all that comes off there is an H. So that makes this an acid. I'm not really ever going to ask you direct questions about this. I just want you to understand kind of why that happens, why acids are acids and bases are bases. Is everyone good with that? Oh, I better leave that there. Oof. All right, let's move to here. This is all out of the, the picture. Okay, so 
Um, strength of acids. I don't need you to know this one because it's a little bit confusing, but I do want you to know the reasons for these two. Okay, first off, let's look at these binary acids. You guys learned the three binary, bin, strong binary acids are ibrin clay, right? Um, why are some acids considered strong and some acids considered weak? Well, it has to do, in this case, with the elect electronegativity of what the H is attached to. Oh, go back to trends. Which has the more electronegativity, chlorine or iodine? Chlorine. So that means chlorine is going to hold on to that H more than iodine. If it holds on to the H more, does that make it a stronger or weaker acid? What makes an acid strong? Dissociation. So if it's holding on to the H more, chlorine's would, chlorine would be, HCl is technically a weaker acid than HI is. So that's why when we get into the other binaries, the HBr, um, the any of them, HP, H3P, H3N, all of those, that particular electronegativity uh, difference is going to create a situation where they're not holding on as strong, or they're holding on stronger, excuse me, so those acids are going to be weaker. All right, HF, super weak acid, okay, because it's holding on to that F like crazy, and it's not, that F, I'm sorry, the F is holding on to the H like crazy, and it's not going to let it go. So HF is a super weak acid, okay? So you need to know that trend of what's going on there. Now our oxy acids. My reasoning might be confusing. So before I even say anything, you just need to remember the greater the number of oxygens, the stronger the acid. This is the key. Now the question of why is what causes some problems. I'm going to draw the weakest one, and then I'm going to draw the strongest one and kind of try to explain why. The H is always attached to the O in these things, so this is what this looks like. Okay. And then we'll compare it to this. Oh, oh, I'm not going to put all my little lone pairs on there. But ultimately what happens is because there's so many O's here that are very electronegative, these O's are like, we want electrons, and are pulling the heck on all the electrons all the way down to here. Okay? So we got a huge dipole moment in that particular area of the molecule. What that does is make this bond more polar. So just like in that last case I was talking about with the acid and base, the more polar this bond is, the more apt the H2O is to come in there and be attracted to it and dissociate it. This is more of an electronegative situation. So dissociation is easier on this guy, so it makes it a stronger acid. While here, yeah, we've got some electronegativity going on, but not, this bond is not as strained here as it is here. So the reason, again, that just the thing you need to know walking away from this is the greater number of oxygens, the actual, the stronger the acid. Yes, Alex? Why isn't what attracted to the more polar side? Well, it's, it's, it's going to, it needs, it's, going in to dissociate a bond. It's not that it's not attracted. We have this surrounded by water molecules. But these bonds are not as polar as this one guy is. Okay? The whole side is, yeah, there will be, due to the dipole moment, there will be water surrounding all of this. But be, this particular bond is more polar than any bond in the whole molecule. So that's where the dissociation is going to happen. Okay? All right, so that's all you need to know about that. Now let's get into doing math, because we all like doing math. All right, so here is the problem where I'm going to prove only first H dissociating, dissociating matters to pH, OK? So I'm proving this mathematically. And again, this is one of those things, do I need to be doing this with you? No. There's a lot of students who don't even ever look at this. I just like showing you why things happen. And I want you to get used to writing dissociation equations. So write the two dissociation reactions showing the diprotic behavior of carbonic acid. 
So if we're going to dissociate this twice, what are we going to what are we going to write? Stepwise. H Okay, we want to I heard Grant say to add water. I'm okay with that. We can we can add water. And we're going to add water and we're going to lose 1 H at a time. This is a week, so I do double headed arrow. What do we do first? Uh-huh. Good. And now the second dissociation is going to occur. And we get an H3O plus. Perfect. So again, we're going to prove that this is the only thing that contributes significantly to pH. All right. The initial concentration of H2CO3 is 0.1 molar. Calculate the H plus concentration, meaning, and then we're going to, I'm going to take it a step further and actually find the pH. In your calculation, assume only the first dissociation occurs. Come on. I'm trying to move this over. There we go. Wow. That video thing messed up. All right, so since this is a weak acid and I'm only going to use the first, I'm going to start a rice table and only put that first equation in the rice table. So I'm going to do H2. The re Why are we using a rice table again? Because we're finding the H plus concentration and the pH of a weak acid. Okay. All right. So the initial concentration then is 0.1. We don't have water in here, 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x. Y'all get your calculators out in quad form because I'm not dropping x. I want, it, I want x to be as exact as possible in this part of the example. They cleared them. Nobody in here has quad form? Chris has got TI-89. Those bum math teachers. All right. Sorry, math teachers, clearing your calculators. All right. So our Ka is equal to products over reactants. So I'm just going to go ahead. Since this is just me trying to prove a point, I'm not going to do the expression. I am going to include the x. Again, just because since this is a math proof example, I want to make sure to um, include it. So we get uh, 4.3 times 10 to the negative eighth minus 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7x is equal to x squared. And if we isolate it, we get 0 is equal to x squared plus 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7th x minus 4.3 times 10 to the negative eighth. So there's our quad form things. Let's go ahead and solve. Did you get one? It's like four or five. I don't know which one. What is it? Just tell me. Tell me what you got. That's what I meant. It's like four or five spots. Negative four. That sounds right. That sounds like what they got, which is equal to the H plus concentration. So go ahead, Chris. Take the um, negative log of that while it's in your calculator. It's hard to take logs on. That's the one bad thing about those. It's hard to graph in the 89s, and it's hard to take logs because it's like you have to go to a different screen. It's crazy. What? So we got a pH here of the first association of about 3.68. Keep in mind this H plus concentration, okay? So is everyone with me now? We've had one dissociation. That's how much H plus was contributed to the solution. So now we're going to do the second dissociation. What's important to know now about the second dissociation is that it's starting after the first dissociation starts. So it's going to have initial concentrations of, we've got H3O plus and some of this in solution and some of that. So our initial concentrations might not all be zero in the next rice table because we have some of this now as a subsequent step. So if we're going to do the second dissociation, we're going to start a rice table and write our second dissociation equation, which was H CO3 minus plus H2O gives us CO3 minus 2 plus H3O plus. What, what do we have initial concentrations for? We don't have this. That's a new thing. But don't we have some of this and some of this 
from the previous step. So what was the initial concentration then? It's the x, right? Um, 2.07 e negative 4. 2.07 times, is that right? All right. So those are our initial concentrations of that. And we're going to have a different k this time. Whoa, look at that exponent on that. Minus x plus x plus x. And since we have an 89 in here, I'm going to put Chris on the spot and make him solve for x with that in there, plus x. So we get our k of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11 equals x times 2.07 times 10 to the negative 4th plus x divided by 2.07 times 10 to the negative 4th minus x. Can you do that? Take your, I mean, I got it. It's, take a minute. For those of you at home, I'll sing you a song. Row, row, row your boat. We should do it in a round. DNA. Okay, let's sing it while he's doing this. Five, six, seven, eight. We love. Now come on, ladder. Do y'all not remember this? How about Gregor Mendel? Isn't that a song you learned? Okay. <laughs> All right, what'd you get? Oh, the song. I thought you meant you had the answer. Chris, how's it going? <laughs> Can someone, someone want to try the quad form? Maybe it'll be faster with quad form, multiplying it out. No, we're not coming back to it. What? Shh, guys, hold on. Well, it, it it is, but I'm trying to use math to prove a point, so I'm trying not to negate anything to prove my point. Y'all start working it out quad form wise then. Yeah. Did they on the homework plug them back in? That's from the textbook, because that's from the textbook answer key. They're plugging it back in. Because remember I said that I'm wanting you to know, because college professors usually don't like you to negate it. So that's why they're doing it in the textbook. However, on the AP, they're not going to be able to do that. So anytime on the AP, just drop it and say it's negligible. OK. All right, what we get? Please let it be a small number. Yes, that's actually what they got last year. Good job, high five. All right, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11 is equal to x. Now, is that our is x our H plus concentration? No, it's that plus x. If I add that to x, what do I get? Like the same thing. Don't even put it in your calculator. Do you see how that's going to be the same stupid number because x is so small? So we did all of that just to show that this is so small, it's not going to change that. And this was, remember, this was the H plus concentration we had after the first dissociation. So this ends up being the exact same pH that it was before. So was that worth all the work? I think it was. So first step is the only step that matters when you're dissociating acids. End of story. Any well, it is because since this is negligible, like had we done the done our thing and dropped this out, we would have done this. So that's why. Yeah, we did all that work, exactly. I wanted to prove a point. All right, now, do you have to ever do that? No, I wanted to just prove a point. This, however, is what today is all about, and that's dealing with salts containing polyprotic, acids or bases, acid or base containing salts. That's kind of the, the topic of these next two problems. It's not hard, it's just weird, okay? So the first thing I need you to look at is the acid table that looks like this at the end of your notes. Stepwise dissociation constants for several polyprotic acids. 
All right. So on this page, you have KA1, KA2, KA3. Why does it say 1, 2, 3? Three different steps. So for every step, there's a different K. We're going to look specifically at phosphoric acid today in all these problems. A lot of students say, how do you know if we have a problem with this whole crazy different K thing? Well, you always have a table to look at, and you'll know based on the acids on the list. The top ones that usually happens for are salts that have the ions from phosphoric acid, carbonic acid, sulfurous, and sulfuric acid. That's, those are the most popular ones that you might see. So what does this stepwise thing mean? While you're learning, I think it's a good idea, since we're looking at H3PO4 today, um, go ahead and give yourself a little chart and say H3PO4, when it does its first step, makes what? H 2PO4 minus. So that's the Ka1. All right. The Ka2 is H2PO4 minus to what? HPO4 minus 2, right? That's the Ka2. And HPO4, write this down, guys. You'll, you'll need it. HPO4 minus 2 goes to PO4 minus 3, and that is our Ka3. If you have this written down, the job that you're about to do in this next problem won't be quite as ah, crazy in your head. All right, so let's go back and actually tackle this problem. It says, determine the pH of a 0 0.100 molar sodium phosphate, sodium dihydrogen phosphate solution. That is a salt, do we agree? Okay, what is the weak part of this salt? H2PO4 minus, okay? When you're doing one of these, you're supposed to take the weak part of the salt and add it to what in a rice table? Water. There's going to be a problem here that we've never had before with those other problems we were doing. Any ideas what the issue is? It starts out. Am I going to, is that H2PO4 a Lewis, I mean a Laurie Bronson acid or base? How do we know? Can it do both? Do you all see how that could accept and make phosphoric acid or lose, right? That's the problem in this case. The other cases we did, there was only one way that H could go, no choices. Here we've got options. So let's write those two options out. We can make this, and I'm just making more room here. What's one thing we could do? We could make HPO4 minus 2 and... H3O plus, what's my other option? If I start with the same thing this time and make that a base, what would I make? H3PO4 and OH minus. So the whole point of now comparing these Ks is to figure out which one of those equations, which one happens. One of them has to happen. So it's going to be the one that happens more often. It's going to be the one that is more favored in the forward direction. So how would it mean in terms of Ks? The one that's more favored in the forward directions, K, would be products over reactants. We want more products, bigger. So we're going to look at and find which one has the bigger K. Now, here's the kicker, and this is what makes this really a little bit confusing, is that those Ks that we have are Ka's, right? So, hey, the first equation is great. Isn't that a Ka equation? Okay, so which step, go back and look at what we wrote down. We're going from PO4 minus to PO4 minus 2. So that is Ka2. What is the value of Ka2? Times 10 to the negative 8. All right, there's our Ka2. Now, crap, this is a K. KB. So how did we find KB yesterday from KAs? 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the KA in question. So, so what you have to do in this is just realize it's the reverse. So what K was this to that? 1, 2, or 3? Isn't that K1? 
So we're going to take this and divide it by Ka1 to get the correct Kb. Does everyone get that? If you don't, say it to me now. Okay. Go ahead and what's the value for Ka1? All right, so what do we get as the KB? I'm going to write it in blue because it's basic. One point three times ten to the negative twelve. Okay, so which one of those is larger or more happen to ha more uh, apt to happen in the forward direction? The first one. So this is the equation. Then we're going to stick in our rice table and just do what we did yesterday. R, I, C, E, we're going to have H2, P, O, 4 minus, plus H2, O, gives us H, P, O, 4 minus 2, plus H, 3, O, plus. Our original concentration from the problem is 0 0.1, 0, 0, minus X, plus X, plus X. So we get 0 0.1 minus X, X, and X. We can negate it, so we get x squared over 0.1 is equal to the k we solved for up top, or the k we just picked out of the lineup, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. Our x, which is equal to our h plus concentration, is e negative what? negative 5. So Morgan, just take the negative log of that. Give me three decimals. Thanks, Grant, for stepping on her. Is that what you got, 4.104? Okay. All right, good. So this part y'all got, right? This is the part that's weird. And we're going to do another one and just do this top part, okay? Make sure y'all get it. But any questions on this one? Yes. Uh, right this, this is KW, and this is the KA1 because it's going reverse. We're doing three H three PO four to the minus one. And if you go back here, whoa, whoa, go back. This is the one is the three to the minus one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. Just the first part of it. All right. So, the weak part of this salt is what? HPO4 minus. If we add water, we should go, oh, crud. That's one of those polyprotic salts. What do I do? I don't know which way to go. So, you're going to write both equations. And we're going to, which way do you want to go this first way? Acid. So, that's going to then donate, make PO4. Oh, this should be a minus 2. My bad. Those are minus 2. So I was like, there's a problem. Minus 3 plus H3O plus. And then this will be a base and gain H2PO4 minus 1 plus OH minus. Okay. So since this is the A, Ka, we can just pick one of the Ks. Which K represents HPO4 minus 2 to PO4 minus 3? K A It's the three, right? It's the third step. So it's four point eight times what? Wow. Wow. E negative twenty three. Does that happen much? No, not at all. Mm -mm. On a side note, there's a titration that we sometimes do with Coca Cola and it has phosphoric acid in it. So we're titrating phosphoric acid, and we'll see, shoop, first H, woo, and then this last one, you don't even really see, this last step. So the first step is bigger than the second step, which is not as big as the third. OK, so let's go ahead and look at this. Uh-oh, this is a KB. So I need to do a KW divided by a KA to find this KB. The question is, which KA is it? So we look at your thing. We're going from, remember, it's going to be backwards. We're going from negative 1 to negative 2. It's Ka2. So this is Ka2. So it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the 6.2e negative 8. All right, so what does our Kb turn out to be? 
E negative 7? Okay. So this is much bigger than that. So this time, which one are we going to use? The base one. But here's the good news. You guys have found the KB now. Okay, so this is what we're going to use. You've already done that work. So remember when we did hydrolysis yesterday, you got to that point and then you found KB and you had to do that. You already found it. So you've got your KB, you're ready to go. You're going to put this into your rice table. And then this is going to be point 0.1, and just like the last one, whoops, plus OH minus. We have 0, 0, minus X, plus X, and so on. Do I need to solve? Are you good? This was the hardest part right here. So this is the winner. If you have trouble with this, you're just going to need to come in and see me, and I'll work through it with you again. Okay? That's it for the unit. Are you excited, Peter? Peter's pumped. <laughs>